up to this point, we've been talking about gas behavior in a very ideal way. What that means is that we're making certain assumptions about gases when we look at the mathematical relationships between the variables, pressure, volume, temperature, number of particles, um, and generally how those gases behave. And we call that those ideal gases. So to start with, ideal gases exist as gases at all temperatures and pressures. Now that means by definition, they don't really exist. It's sort of like the perfect case because at a low enough temperature or a high enough pressure, the particles will no longer be in the gas state. They'll either be liquids or solids, right? So for ideal gases, we're not even taking that into account, okay? Ideal gases are always gases, they always follow the kinetic theory, and they always obey the gas laws, okay? The assumptions that we make about ideal gases is that the particle size is negligible, okay? Uh, compared to the space between particles, the particle size is, is irrelevant, it's too small. And that there are no interactions between particles, no intermolecular forces, because both of those things are going to interfere with how the gases behave. So, real gases, like oxygen or carbon dioxide or anything, they behave like ideal gases, ideally, at high temperatures, so they're moving around really fast, and or at low pressures, okay? So they're not all squished in together, they're sort of allowed to move around. So as long as you're talking about high temperature and low pressure, every gas will have ideal behavior, okay? But once you start lowering the temperature, raising the pressure up, real gases behave a little differently, okay? So real gases refer to actual gases that are in the lab or in the world. Uh, particle size is not zero. Particles actually have a size. They, they take up space. They have a volume. That's part of this. And a lot of gas particles, actually all gas particles, exhibit some kind of interactions, intermolecular attractions or inter interactions, with other gas particles. Some gases, those intermolecular attractions are very strong, and they, they are going to affect how, how easy it is to move those gas particles around. Okay? So real gases don't always follow the gas laws because the size of the particles and the interactions between them are going to affect their behavior. Okay? So at, for real gases, at low temperature or high pressure, um, gases aren't going to behave ideally. At low temperature, when they're not moving around as much, those attractive forces are going to make them kind of be, sort of want to hang around each other. At high pressure, where they're, they're pressed in, um, that space between them decreases, and again, they're going to exhibit behavior that doesn't follow the gas laws, okay? So when you're doing experiments with real gases, you don't always get the expected results under certain conditions, right? You can, you can make it better, again, by raising the temperature and lowering the pressure, you can make those real gases behave more ideally and follow the gas laws. But there's a difference between those two, and I think it's important that you understand that. So, here is a summary of the difference between those two. So real gases are not real, they're, they're, ideal gases are not real, they're imaginary. Uh, real gases are actually gases, okay? Ideal gases follow the gas laws always. Real gases don't follow the gas laws exactly unless you have the right conditions. Ideal gases, particles aren't attracted to each other. Real gases, the particles do attract each other. They have some kind of intermolecular forces of attraction. Um, and all of them do that. We'll get into that more later on. Uh, in ideal gases, the particles have no volume. It's small enough that it doesn't matter. Real gases, some are fairly large. Okay, some particles are large and they take up space. That's going to affect their behavior. In ideal gases, they move in straight lines. In real gases, they don't necessarily move in straight lines. They may tumble through. They may sort of be attracted to other gases, and that changes their traje trajectory a little bit. 
And finally, ideal gases have what we call elastic collisions, whereas real gases have non-elastic collisions. We'll talk more about the physics of gas collisions later on. So, take a look at this problem. Under which set of conditions, temperature and pressure, would a gas, gas behave most like an ideal gas? So what do you think, A, B, C, or D? Remember, real gases behave most like ideal gases at low pressure, high temperature. Okay, so you're looking at C. Answer C, high temperature, low pressure. That's really it. That's the difference between real and ideal gases.